Many examples are used to illustrate the Bernoulli effect. The curve of a spinning ball. The ball standing on an air jet or on a water jet. Blowing a piece of paper over the top so that it lifts. And the lift of an aircraft wing. These are all explained using the Bernoulli effect, but maybe not that accurately. Let's first of all look at the statement of the principle. Of course, his statement wasn't in English, but the gist of it is that if a fluid that's either a gas or a liquid, which is very runny, a very low viscosity, and has very poor conduction of heat, if it increases its speed, at the same time there is a decrease in the pressure on that fluid. The thought process of this argument goes something like this. If we have a fluid running through a pipe with a constriction in it, in that constriction the fluid will have to flow faster. To get through the constriction the fluid must speed up as it enters the constriction and then as it leaves it must slow down. In order to make it speed up there must be a force applied to accelerate it. And in order for it to slow down there must again be a force applied but in the opposite direction. The only possibility for a force to be supplied is from the pressure within that fluid. That is, higher pressure in the larger tubes to make it speed up and then slow down. So the higher pressure in the flow direction on the left hand side and opposite the flow direction on the right hand side. Notice that this applies to the same streamline within the fluid where it changes velocity. It is simply not so that when fluid is moving quickly that its pressure is necessarily lower. So why does this paper rise as we blow over the top? It looks convincing that it might be the Bernoulli effect. But if it is, and then we blow across the bottom of the paper, the paper should go down. But, as you can try for yourself, it doesn't. Cartoons of a ball balancing on a water jet suggest it's like this, often offering the Bernoulli explanation that the pressure is lower in the centre because that is where the water is fastest. But it's not like that. If you look at a real situation where a ball balances on a water jet, easy to do for yourself with a hose jet and a just a simple plastic ball, the water hits the ball on the edge and a completely different explanation offers. In this still we can see that the water clings to the ball and spins around it. The water is then thrown off to one side and even down below the ball. The loss of the upward momentum of the water transferred to the ball will provide an upward force on the ball. That's Newton's third law of action and reaction. The ball on the air jet looks similar but the explanation may not be quite the same. One possible explanation is using Bernoulli. The explanation goes something like this. If the ball moves slightly to one side of the air column, then the air travelling around it will be faster nearer the centre of the column. The pressure, therefore, in this faster air will be less than it is on the other side, and the ball will be pushed by this higher pressure back towards the centre of the column. Other explanations are available. The aerodynamics of a wing is complex. The lift is most easily explained by the wing pushing the air downwards and that change in momentum producing a lift that is a force in the equal and opposite direction according to Newton's third law. The airspeed above the wing is higher and the resulting lift can be explained by the Bernoulli effect However, the extra distance taken for the air to travel around the top of the wing is not sufficient to explain the large increase in speed needed for a Bernoulli lift. The curved flight of a spinning ball is much better explained by the Magnus effect than by Bernoulli, and that is explained in a second video on this channel. There are many good and very practical examples of the Bernoulli principle and the Venturi effect, which is a modification of it, showing that the pressure of a fluid is reduced just beyond an obstruction or restriction in the flow of any fluid. The pitot tube used to measure fluid velocity and the speed of an aircraft. 
the carburettor and the simple atomizer as used in perfume sprays. Not that I have one of my own, you understand. The Bunsen burner illustrates the idea used in most gas burners to mix the fuel gas with air. The gas is pushed through a fine hole and as it rushes out the resulting lower pressure draws in air. It mixes well with the gas and that results in efficient burning. The same arrangement can be seen in this gas torch. Unscrewing the barrel you can see the very fine hole through which the gas is escaping. Attempting to light the gas at that point is useless. The fast fine jet of gas simply blows the match out. With the barrel in place the Venturi effect causes the air to be pulled in through the air holes, mixing thoroughly with the gas and burning efficiently. Video explanations of the Coanda effect and the Magnus effect can be seen here. Thank you for watching. Thank you.